Hey guys, hope you're doing good. In this video, we are going to see how to handle numeric data in Python. In Python, we have two types of numeric data. One is integer, another one is float. For example, if I say num assign 12, then that is integer. If I say the same thing, num assign 12.36, that is float. This is how you differentiate, right? Any whole number that's called as integer and any decimal place value is called as float. Let me take an example. For example, if I have a value called as num as 30 and then say num2 as 10. Let me do some common arithmetic operations so that you can understand how this numeric data works. So these are the common arithmetic operations that we have in Python. Apart from the normal arithmetic operations that you would have seen in other programming language, we have something different here in Python. We'll see what are, what are those. Now here, let me say print and say num1 plus num2. When I do this, that is 30 plus 10. That gives you 40. Now if I do the same thing with a subtraction, that gives you 20. If I do a multiplication, that gives you 300. If I give a, do a division, that gives you 3.0. Like if at all I have my value is 5 and 2, that gives you 2.5. Usually in other programming language, if I do a division on two integer values, that gives me only integer. That is, I'll be getting only 2. But whereas in Python, if I do a division of two integer values, it gives a decimal value, that is 2.5. Now, if at all you feel that you don't want a decimal value, but you want a float value, sorry, you don't want a float value, but a, but a integer value, then you go for a flow division. When I do a flow division, phi divide 2 will give you 2, not a decimal value, right? And now, one more thing is modulus. If I do a modulus of two values, that gives you the remainder of the value. Here in this example, phi divide 2 gives you 1. That's the division, like that's a remainder value of it. Right. And one more thing is their exponent, that is like a power function, where when I say num1 exponent num2, it means that phi power 2. So when I say phi power 2, that gives you 25. These are the arithmetic operations that we have, right? If I want to increment any value in any programming language, I'll just do like this, the variable and followed by the increment operator, that is plus plus. And if I want to decrement any value, I'll say minus minus. Now this is not possible in Python, wherein you need to do like this. I'll say num1 assign num1 plus one. When I do this, my value is getting incremented. When I do this, my value will get decremented. Now, this is the only way that you can do it since you don't have any increment or decrement operator in Python. But we have a special operator that's called as arithmetic assignment operator. When I say arithmetic assignment operator, that looks like this. When I want to increment a value, I'll just say num1 plus assign 1. Now this can be used only when your left hand side variable is on the right hand side as well, like this. So when your left hand side variable is there on the right hand side, I can just pull this out and then say the op plus operator on the left hand side. Now this is not only for plus operator, this can be used on addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, floor division, more low, everything, everything. Now when I say num1 plus assign, I still get the same value 6. And if I want decrement, I can just say decrement like this. And you can even do a multiplication of it. Right. So this arithmetic assignment operator helps you in doing the work. Like easily, like you can instead of just repeating the same variable again here and there on the left hand side, I can use an arithmetic assignment operator. Apart from assignment operations, 
The other common things that we can do with number is comparison. We can compare two, operate, two operands or two numbers with the help of relational operators. So these are the things I have listed here that is greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, equal to and not equal to. Now this compares two values or compares two variables and gives you either a true or a false and those are called as boolean values. True and false are called as boolean values. Now here, let me just take this out, that's not required for me. I have two values that is num1 and num2 in that I have some values present inside the variable. Now here when I say num1 greater than num2, when I run this, I am getting the output as true because num1 is actually greater than num2. Now if at all I say num1 less than num2, my output will be false because that is not true. Now this is how the comparison or the relational operator works. It compares two values of a variable and provides you either true or false based on the input or based on the value that is provided inside the variable. Now it is not only that I can, I can use variables, I can also use values directly. Let me say 10 less than 20. This provides me false because sorry 10 less than 20 provides me true because the can what uh, uh, what is there here 10 is exactly less than 20. Now when I say equal to this provides me false because 10 is not equal to 20 and if I want just give 10 not equal to 20 yes it is true. This is what the comparison operator does and apart from this we have some built-in functions that helps you to do some operation on numbers. One among that is abs. When I say abs of minus 20 and when I execute this, it removes the negative value of the negative sign of the value. That is the work of abs. Now we have one more method that is called as round. The rounds of a value to a nearest integer. For example, when I say num 12.45, let me give the variable here num and then that rounds me to the nearest integer that is 12. Now if at all instead of 4, 5, if I have 6, 5, that rounds me to the nearest integer that is 13. Now if I want to have some like restriction after decimal place, right? For example, I have a decimal value like this that is that goes with more than 6, right? There's a 6 digit uh, after decimal place. Now if I want to restrict it to 2 digits, I can say round the variable name or the number that I'm going to give followed by the number of digits that you require after decimal place. Now when I execute this or when I run this, I'll be getting 12.66 and again it rounds off. Apart from this, we have one more method that is called this BIN that gives the binary equivalent of any value that you provide inside. So that gives you the binary equivalent and before that it says 0B that to mention that it is a binary value. Now in the previous video, we have seen string, hope you remember that, right? So I'll say num assign sam or I say 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this 1, 2, 3, 4, it is actually a number but that is represented as a string inside that. And when I say print num, it prints 1, 2, 3, 4 and you are wondering whether it is a number or a string. We have a built-in method called this type which will provide the type of the variable. Now when I execute this or when I run this, it says that the type of number is str that is string and not number. But like when I try to do this right when I say let me have num1 and say num2, let me say 64 and 100. Now when I try to add this, usually we add numbers using arithmetic operators. When I say plus num1 plus num2 and it provides you 10034 because num1 and num2 both are string and they are not numbers. When I use a plus operator in between two strings, it actually concatenates and doesn't add two numbers. Now if at all I want to consider this as numbers, we can use a built-in function called as int to typecast it. 
can say plus int of num2 let me store it in a variable call this sum now here what this does is it converts the number num1 to integer and converts the number num2 or a string sorry the converts the string which is present inside num1 to integer and it converts the string num2 to integer when I add this I'll be getting 134 and not required to have any variable you can also give it inside the print statement directly let me pull this out and put it here when I execute this still I get the same output now if at all I have 3 4 and 5 6 now here I should not use int rather I need to use float because the string what is there is a kind of float there now when I run this again I'll be getting a added value now these things are possible let me give you which is not possible I'll say num1 assign I say sam123 and then say num2 assign eddy345 when I try to convert this let me say print int of num1 let me come on this out it's not right quite for me now when I try to uh, do this right I'm just trying to convert the string to integer what as we did here right we have converted the string to an integer but when I try to do this it will throw me an error because what I provided here in the string is that the combination of alphabet and numeric alphanumeric string cannot be converted to integer rather a numeric string can be converted to integer now here what I provided in this previous example is here this is a numeric value but it is a string here what it is that it is an alphanumeric value it is a string now alphanumeric values can never be converted to integer or float but a numeric value which is inside us within the single quotes or a double quotes is a string that can be converted now these are the things like which can be converted and this cannot be converted these things are not possible make sure that you're using float for a numeric which has decimal place and int for the numeric value which is not an integer right now decimal place is not an integer but like when I say hundred I'll go with int and not float when I execute this I'll be getting 134.56 so make sure that you're giving a specific typecasting you are exactly typecasting the values with the help of method int float like that that's it guys if you have any queries or doubts please do comment in the comment section I will reply back to you and if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel thank you very much